Welcome to the ST2K Year in Review 2007 show. This show is a little bit different because we're not going to review no video games this week. Uh, this edition is just going to be the whole year in review of 2007 for movies, wrestling, video games, and music. I'm Ron Moore along with Raven. Alright, nice pose there. Uh, and the first thing I'm going to talk about, um, a lot of big news stories this year, or last year rather, 2007, about wrestling. And the main things we're going to talk about for wrestling is the a lot of uh, wrestling icons died in 2007. And um, so the first one, uh, in January of 2007, uh, Bam Bam Bigelow passed away. Um, I'm not sure of the cause of death. It might have been a heart attack or something. I'm not sure. But um, in 2007, like the first three months, first you had Bam Bam Bigelow pass away in 2007. Then the next month you had Mike Austin who hung himself. Then in March, you had Bad News Brown, I think, died at age 60-something with a heart attack. So it seemed like a pattern, like, man, I hope this don't keep up every single month. Then I think April and May, nobody that I know of died. Then in June, you had uh, Sensational Sherry that passed away. Then, of course, June 25th, I think, 07, the biggest news story uh, in 07, I think, was the death of Chris Benoit, who supposedly... For what they gathered, all the evidence, they said that he murdered his family than himself, which is real messed up. But, uh, 2001st, January, uh, Bam Bam Bigelow passed away, and, uh, he was someone that I watched as a little kid. He was someone that wrestled for many, many years, and, uh, Raven, are you familiar with the career of Bam Bam Bigelow? Yeah, dude, he was awesome, man. He had the, like, flip, flying, leaping headbutt. Yeah. Um, and he was also in Major Pain. He was the guy yeah. that was they hired to like beat the crap out of Major Pain, but um, it yeah. didn't work. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, it was. Um, I think I wonder if Ben Wall stole that don, diving headbutt from uh, Bigelow. What do you think? Um, probably. I think he did. Because Ben Wall, I mean, I think Bigelow was around, or at least more famous before Ben Wall. So oh, I, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, he uh, was an old school WWF, I think around the time Hogan was probably still around in, in his yeah. prom. And uh, how many people do you see get a, a flaming tattoo on their bald head? That looked pretty cool. I don't know. I know somebody with a spider web on there. Yeah, I think it was 45, I'm not sure. Then, if I'm, if I'm uh, remembering correctly, I think he was 45. Yeah. Um, the next month, Mike Awesome. Passed away, and man, he was no pun intended, but he was an awesome wrestler. I mean, he had uh, what are you laughing at? <laughs> it wasn't a pun, it was, I mean, that's how I describe him. But uh, he had some of the best matches in ECW. He was not very popular when he jumped to WCW for the, the how he did it. But uh, Mike Awesome, though, uh, in his last match, I think, ever was uh, in 2005, ECW one night stand against Masao Tanaka, who he had awesome matches with all the time. I mean, he, he just had some of the best matches ever, and uh, it was a shame that he was going through some horrible times, I guess, a divorce or whatever, and he hung himself. I think the night he hung himself, his friends come to pick him up to hang out with him, then I think, from what I understand, they found him dead, they found him hung, you know, and that's pretty uh, pretty messed up. Uh, what did that guy say about Mike Dawson? Didn't he have, a, like, a curly mullet? Yeah, the, uh, he did in his early part of career at ECW. Wasn't he in WCW? Yeah, they made him look stupid. Yeah, didn't yeah. they make him look like some disco interviewer? Yeah, uh, the fat chick thriller. Uh, the, oh, that yeah. 70s, that yeah, 70s guy, Mike Awesome. Yeah, that's right. Which is pretty lame. Yeah. And, now, he had, he was known as a career killer. Then they changed it to that 70s guy and more friends Russo shenanigans for you. Yeah. But uh, he was real cool in ECW. Uh, I mean, so, and then he, but once he left ECW, his career just went downhill. I mean, in WWE, they didn't use him that good. Um, I think he, uh, yeah, he came back in June 2005 for one last match against Masao Tanaka, in which he won, and it was awesome, no pun intended again, but, uh, you know, rest in peace, Mike Awesome as well, uh, then in March you had Bad News Brown, he's probably not that well known, but, uh, he was kind of, he was a heel in the WWE, and, um, he was uh, WWF rather back then, and um, he I think he was 62 and died of a heart attack. The third straight month, a uh, wrestler passed away. 
So uh, it was like, man, I hope this pattern don't continue. But unfortunately, it seemed like 2007 was the year of resting death. And uh, so April, May, not that I know of, anybody passed away. I might be wrong. If I am, you can correct me. Uh, then in June, you had Sensational Sherry. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, before that, you had Vincent Man who got blown up in the limo, and he was supposedly dead, which is the lamest storyline since using Eddie Guerrero's death in the storylines. Um, but then, uh, you know, Peter Van Sider and myself, we were saying they should not use a storyline like that, that someone is dead. Like the Tory, was it out, Tory Wilson's dad? <laughs> they, oh uh, yeah, whenever she was, when she was, when he was with Don Marie. And, yeah, yeah, that was lame. Yeah, and um, then they had Vince McMahon getting blown up on national television, and I think there's actually people saying, "Was that real? Did he really die on national television?" I mean, it's called TV. Yeah, it's called wrestling. It's fake. Uh, no, he didn't die, obviously. And uh, what happened was, um, then like a week or two later, Sherry died. And so, on, on WWE.com, they put the graphic up of, or uh, they put like a small section of like Sherry passes away and all that. But they still had Vince McMahon's death overshadowing hers. I don't remember who Sherry is. Yeah, um, you'll, see, you'll see the picture here on the show later. Oh, there it is right there. We can't see it now. This is before the editing process. But, uh... Anyway, you don't know, remember who she managed? Rick Flair, Harlem Heat. She was she was with Shawn Michaels man. She was Shawn Michaels manager. Remember, she was the one that sang his song. I know I'm cute. I know I'm that song. It's been too long, man. If you see a picture, you'll probably remember. Okay. And um, so and then you had the tragic death of Chris Benoit. Not only him, his family, and that's when Vince McMahon had no choice but to step out and say, uh, uh, you know, that Chris Benoit passed away and. I first found out about it. I came home from work. Now, the night before, I was listening to the, I think it was an ECW One Night Stand pay-per-view of 07. He was supposed to wrestle CM Punk, but he backed out of the pay-per-view because of a family emergency. And then uh, the next day, I get home from work. My dad leaves a message saying, you might want to turn on TV. I don't, uh, they said something. You might want to see what happened tonight. I don't know if you recorded it or not, but check it out. But I didn't record it. So I called my dad, and he said, Chris Benoit was, and his family was found dead in his home. I'm like, what? And, you know, I couldn't think of what happened. Some people speculated someone just murdered them in their house. Uh, is that why he went home for a family emergency? Because he found out they were in danger or something? Then when he got there, they all somehow died? I'm out. Or did, was it carbon monoxide from air conditioning or something? I don't know. I mean, we was all wondering what happened. And unfortunately, we found out, like, uh, the next day or so that, he was the one that murdered himself and his whole family. The process over the next week, wasn't it? I think so, yeah, but I was, what I understood it, they didn't find all this out until like two or three days afterwards. Yeah, so I mean, I'm like, I just can't believe that, man. That was sorry for what he did, obviously, and people said uh, he, was just, he wasn't right in the head or he probably did too much uh, steroids or drugs or something that caused him to do that. Yeah, wasn't he getting a bunch of like or not him, but wasn't he sending out a bunch of text messages to, like, a bunch of his friends? Yeah, I don't know if it was a clue. Like, well, we're all about to die. I want someone someone to find us or on time or something like that. I don't I don't remember what the text messages were. But, man, I, and that's... I know some of them were, like, how to get into the house, the dogs are locked up, something like that, which is really weird. I mean, freaked some of the guys up from what I understood. Yeah, and then, um... WWE management was concerned. They sent the authorities over to his house to check on him, and that's when he found out they were dead. And I heard that, um, I think, I'm not sure if I heard this right, but Benoit actually strangled his son to death or put the cross face on him for real and killed him that way. So I don't, I don't know, but the whole thing's just messed up, man. And I've always, I was always a fan of Benoit. Yeah, he's cool. I mean, as a wrestler, but I, I still respect, no one can take away the fact that he was a great wrestler. But find out what he did, you can't look at him the same no more. Yeah. So when I see him on TV, I'm like, that's the man that killed his family and himself. It's one thing to kill yourself, but you take your family with you, that's just horrible, man. That, that's just wrong. I, I don't know what else to say about that. But now, and then the rest of me, a 20 moment, when Benoit and A. Guerrero in the ring celebrating together, that's kind of tarnished now. You yeah. know, they're both dead. You know, they're both gone. A. Guerrero passed away because of, you know, his health problems. 
Benoit killed himself and his family, and, and you see it in there. You don't think positive no more about that that moment or about him. So that's really, really messed up, man. That that happened. It's just freaking sad. I mean, anything else you want to add about that? Um, not really. I mean, you pretty much covered it. Yeah. So, uh, part of me wants to, part of me wants to say rest in peace. Part of me doesn't want to because of what he did. But that that was the biggest shocking news story of the year 2007 right there and uh so that was 2007 definitely was the year of death i mean and uh it wasn't shocking to find out about some of these wrestlers passing away because you seem like every year you hear it happening yeah. but for a wrestler to kill himself and his family that's i mean that's just um you know almost surreal it is just, it's just surreal but uh anyway uh what else in wrestling happened that I'll care to talk about. Um, I don't really keep up with wrestling that much no more because it sucks now. Um, it but I do try to keep up with it on the internet. Every year I order the Royal Rumble. I don't know if I will this year, but every year before that I have. And uh, Royal Rumble 07 was pretty awesome. Uh, the only thing I remember about it, obviously, was uh, The Undertaker winning the Royal Rumble. And that was pretty cool because he's never won a Royal Rumble. And he actually uh, won it this time. It was him and Shawn Michaels was the last two in there. I really thought Shawn Michaels was going to win, but I'm glad that Undertaker did. And he went on to WrestleMania 23 to beat Batista and still remain undefeated at WrestleMania and to be the world champion. Now I believe it's 15-0 at WrestleMania. So, uh, and WrestleMania 23 itself was pretty cool also. The, did you watch Royal Rumble or WrestleMania at all? No, dude. I, I hadn't kept up with the wrestling, man. I mean, yeah. I just... I got fed up with the wrestling a while back, man. It's just, I don't know. Yeah, it's definitely not as good as it was. Um, Pretty much after the whole WWE name change, that's whenever I stopped watching it. Yeah, wrestling is definitely not that popular anymore, and you can look at the numbers and, and tell that. But um, WrestleMania 23 was pretty good. The What's it called? That lad, Money in the Bank ladder match was awesome. And I'm glad Mr. Kennedy won. And that was a pretty good match. The ending could have been better when he knocked CM Punk off the ladder with the other ladder. And but I'm glad he won. And uh, WrestleMania, the other, I forgot what happened, but I do remember it being a great pay-per-view. And uh, what's the song from Salava? Uh, Ladies and Gentlemen, I think is what it's called. Slobber? The heck? Is it Saliva? Saliva. Oh, 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 Slobber. Okay. Ha, uh-huh. ha. Uh, but, uh, it's a pretty cool song to open up WrestleMania and end it with it. It's pretty cool. So WrestleMania 23 wasn't that bad. Hope we got to see how WrestleMania 24 turns out. Um, I think I'll pass. Yeah. <laughs> TNA sucks. I mean, Vince Russo is somebody screwing it up. I mean, you see Team 3D now, and they having some weird, sorry promos. And I mean, just Samoa Joe should have been the champion already. Uh, and it's just. Uh, TNA has just really gone downhill. I'm real disappointed in them. I catch glimpses here and there. Last I saw was uh, uh, Scott Steiner had some kind of um, presuming it. <laughs> he had some kind of um, briefcase that said he had a world title match or something like that. Yeah. He lost it or some gay thing like that. <laughs> yeah. But I don't know. I don't really keep up with it. I noticed it was like him, Road Dog, and I don't know, like other people I didn't recognize. Uh, Christopher Daniels, who I guess in real life got fired or released or wanted to go somewhere else, because in the storyline he also uh, had um, he got the briefcase where you can get fired. Uh-huh. So he's gone, obviously. Um, and uh, TNA is just not good. I mean. I'm very disappointed in it. And um, so I think that is it for wrestling. Uh, now we're going to talk about some of the best movies that came out in 2007. Woo-hoo. And uh, first thing we're going to talk about, Ray going to talk to you about Three Tender Human. A human. A human. How do you say it? Go ahead, uh, Ray. Three Tender Human. All right, yeah, Three Tender Human is awesome. First off, it. <laughs> First off, it stars Christian Bale, Batman, um, one of the best Batmans, actually the best Batman. Val Kilmer? No. Don't make me stab <laughs> you. Um, 
he's he owns a ranch in the middle of nowhere, and these guys who he, who he owes money to go out and start a fire for, um, in his on his barn, and just just to raise money, he he's pretty much the only one who volunteers to take the criminal of the movie. Um, what's his name? The Joker. No, the guy from Cinderella Man. Um, Cinderella, no. Cinderella Man and uh, Gladiator. Russell Crowe? Yeah, Russell Crowe. He's the bad guy in the movie. Or is he? Um, right. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty awesome, man. I, I guarantee you check it out. Um, good movie. It comes out tonight at midnight. Well, you know, it's released. Whatever movies are released. Go to Walmart and get it there. Yeah. All right. Second movie uh, I saw was way back when... Uh, I don't remember the month. Stardust. No, it sounds kind of like a chick flick or something like that, but it's actually pretty funny. Um, this guy crosses into a... He, well, it starts out with his dad. He looks just like his dad. He crosses over into this field where there's this big stone wall blocking it, and he crosses over. It's like another world. It's like all fantasy... It's all fantasy on one side, and it's the real, the real world on the other side. And he goes into the fantasy world, he meets uh, this woman, and he buys a flower from her and ends up sleeping with her or something, something weird like that. And she ends up having a kid, and the kid, uh, she gets somebody to take the kid to, to the father. And, you know, years pass over, later on, he grows up, looks just like his dad. And, you know, he gets, he finds all this stuff, and uh, somehow or another, uh, this, a living star gets summoned from outer space, and it's a girl. And, like, anytime she's happy, she, like, glows, when she's not, she looks normal. Um, they end up falling in love, all this yabba yabba yabba, that kind of crap. Uh, let me see what else, um... Not Al Pacino, uh, Robert De Niro's in this, he is hilarious. He turns out to be some weird, well, he throws it in everybody's face that he's like some evil pirate, something like that. Yeah, he's kind of goofy, he like dresses in women's clothing whenever nobody's looking, right. stuff like that. Yeah, well, just we like Ronnie. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what movie is this again? Stardust. Oh, okay. And, okay. Go Dust? No. Next, after that, super bad. That movie is awesome. It's awful and awesome. No, it's so awful. No, it's sucked. That's why it's called super bad. It's awful no, it's awesome. Good. It's awful awesome. There you go. Uh, <laughs> these two kids... Um, it's awful something. No. These two kids are trying to get beer for a party with these two girls they're trying to hook up with. Um, <laughs> the chubby kid on there has like the dirtiest mouth I've ever heard. But it's all funny. Um... So is that the objective of the movies to get beer? <laughs> well, uh, they're trying to sleep with girls and all that. It's just oh, okay. really funny, and you have to see it. Let me see. Um, after that, live free, die hard. Yes. Awesome, awesome movie. Movie's awesome. I know Ronnie wants to talk about that. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, movie's awesome. Yes. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. I mean, I got it on DVD, obviously, and it's just. Uh, in my opinion, it's not as good as the last one, uh, which is Die Hard with a Vengeance. But this one's definitely good. Uh, Bruce Willis has aged a lot, but he's still awesome. Um, Justin, whatever his name is in the movie, is awesome. Um, he's the Mac guy. And just in case you haven't figured it out by now, uh, we're going to talk about movies. So if you don't want to be spoiled by the following movies that's on the description of the video to your right, get the hell out! Yeah. Um, <laughs> and watch this after you. And watch this video after you've seen those movies because we're going to spoil some things for you probably. Um, die Hard, with, I mean, Live Free or Die Hard. Um, <laughs> the story is this super hacker, or whatever. He's a digital terrorist. He can hack into pretty much anything: the traffic lights, the uh, uh, FBI computers, and all that stuff. Anything like he said. Yeah, and um, <laughs> it's a pretty awesome movie. And I mean, it came out in June, of 07, and it's a pretty good and. and my opinion, the rankings, the top four Dahar movies, the, uh, 
the the all of them are good. The top four, there were only there's, four. Right? I know. That's, not, that's <laughs> what I meant. All four of them are good, but the second one is the worst out of the ones. Uh, the second die hard. Uh, the harder. Is that where the plane uh, got blown up and he hit the ejector seat and he's all like flying up and yeah, yeah that one was pretty dope. That was uh, <laughs> well, it's a good movie, but it's the worst out of all four, in my opinion. Number three would be probably the, the first Die Hard with Sammy Jackson. Yeah, no, that's no the first Die Hard is. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Number three, that's number three out of the top four of all four. Number two is Live Free or Die Hard, and then the. Best one in my opinion is Die Hard with a Vengeance, and uh, Live Free of Die Hard is definitely awesome. Get on DVD. Strongly suggest you do it. What? <laughs> All right, next movie. Wait, I thought you were gonna talk about Live Free. You pretty much covered it. Live, live, what's your <laughs> opinion on you it? You killed a <laughs> you killed a helicopter with a cop car. <laughs> <laughs> I ran out of bullets. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, you pretty much covered everything I had to say about that. Okay. Um, next movie. Or, no, what were you going to say? I was going to say, bring up movie report. It's on the list. Spider-Man 3. I haven't seen it. Okay. Do you want to be spoiled or not? I don't care. I already know everything about it. Spider-Man 3. Um, <laughs> no, it, it was good, but the, <laughs> the ending I was disappointed in, and I thought Part 2 was the best one of all, the, of the, all three of them. I thought Part 3 was supposed to be the final part, but from what I hear, they're making Part 4 in, like, 2009, 2010. Yeah, they shouldn't. I thought in Part 3, you know, um, Spider-Man and Kirsten Dunst, whatever the names are in the movie, uh, are supposed to get married, and that was it. That was the conclusion of the movie, of the trilogy for the movies. No, uh, they all hug each other at the end, which I thought was a story ending. Uh, now, it's a good drama for when Harry died. But I just hate sad stuff in movies where it, it's all too emotional. They're all crying their eyes out. I hate that stuff in movies. And Spider-Man 3 got real soft. And you see the commercials now on Time Warner Cable on Demand or whatever. You got, you know, it's like uh, it shows a commercial and Kirsten Dunst is going, we have to forgive each other. We must find who we are and choose what we are. Shut up and just fight villains. Don't be so <laughs> dramatic. And Spider-Man 3 kind of got soft. You know, uh, but it's a good movie, though, overall. <laughs> yeah, that was favorite movie, by the way. But now, uh, uh, <laughs> so you've seen the movie, right? Robot Mountain, tell us about. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, what? <laughs> no, uh, uh, very fortunately, I have not. <laughs> okay, what's next on the list? Uh, free. Harry Potter 5. Or no, Order of the free. Phoenix. Uh-huh. No, that was Live Free. <laughs> Jackass. Um, this is the list we're looking at here. And, uh, yeah, perfect quality right there. A movie called Freak. Uh-oh. Okay. okay. Harry Potter and the Slash Stones. Go ahead. Oh, what? <laughs> there's, there's a band Slash called Harry, Stones, Harry and the right. Slash Stones, ECW. Well, oh, there's, there's another band called Harry and the Potters. Right. Oh, okay. Let's see. No. Harry Potter 5, Order of the Phoenix. Um, it was dark. As the, you know, it gets dark just like the books do. Yeah, and that's it. Next movie, yeah, no. <laughs> um, it got a little cheesy. It kind of continued the cheesiness from, I'd say, the third movie. But Was there a lot of cheese in the movie or what? Yes. There's a bunch <laughs> of cheese wheels. They're, like, killing people left and right. Cheese wheels? Yes. Right. Uh, anyways, um, yeah, it's worth seeing once at least. I mean, you know, if you're a Harry Potter fan, watch it. You know, if not... Whatever. Okay, next movie! Um, Fantastic Four Rise of the Silver Surfer. A lot better than the first one. Silver Surfer owned everybody pretty much. Uh, Johnny Storm, he he wasn't Johnny Storm in the first movie, and he's pretty much himself in the second one. Uh, he wasn't just some gay guy, and, um, but of course, you know, Johnny Storm isn't supposed to be gay. He was, he was gay in the first movie, but, um, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I don't want to spoil it, there's a lot of Well, this is, well, I mean, if you don't want to spoil it, then stop right now. Well, the only thing I, I didn't I mean, like, so, I mean, I'm not talking about you, I'm talking about people stop watching right now. Oh, uh, yes, want to be spoiled. quit watching. <laughs> <laughs> um, that looks scary. Uh, uh let me see, um, the only thing I, was, I didn't like about the movie, they didn't show Galactus. I mean, they showed, like, the outline of his helmet, like, 
and weird. Right. Um, but other than that, they didn't show anything. He's just some big ball of gas. Right. And, yeah. I guess uh, Tums will take care of him. <laughs> oh. No. <laughs> and it's all supposed to be leading into the Silver Surfer movie, so hopefully that's good. But oh, and for those of you who didn't know, the guy who played Silver Surfer also played Abe in Hellboy. But Fish Guy? Just a little movie fact type right. crap. Yeah. Okay. Okay, next movie. Let me scratch this in there. Pirates 3. Yes, Pirates I've of seen the Caribbean that world's in. I've seen that one. That was pretty good. Long, uh, long, <laughs> but good. Yeah, well, I mean, it's crazy. It's I thought it was definitely. Good. I thought it was definitely better than uh, part two. Yeah. Um. It does explain a lot more. Um, talks about like a bunch of stuff that they talked about in the first movie. Um, recurses and all that crap. Um. And they gave away so many, there were so many hints in the second movie about what was going on, and, and of course a lot of it's revealed in the third movie, but if you keep your eyes open, um, right. you can see a lot of just hidden things here and there in the second movie. Uh, let me see, um, Will becomes the captain of the Flying Dutchman. Oh, movie spoiler, I don't care. <laughs> um, <laughs> Let me see what else. I think the first one. Captain Hook shows up. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> I think the first one was the best out of the trilogy, in my opinion. But part three is definitely pretty good. Yeah, it was awesome. Um, Too long though. Uh, that was weird. Whenever he looked, whenever the he's like the movie's like a trip on acid or something. It's weird because he's like Jacks in the underworld dimension, or whatever. He sees all the other Jacks, like some of them are all tatted up and all that. Yeah, he's in Davy Jones' locker is what it's called. Yeah, that's right. Uh, a big locker. And it's weird because that one, like, his brain is showing, he takes out his brain and he licks it like he did earlier in the movie when he looked at Rock or whatever, the crab. Yeah. Uh, that was pretty weird. Yeah. Um, I guess being Davy Jones' locker just makes you trip out. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, being by yourself that long. Uh, How long was he in there by himself? I think they said like six months. Oh, okay. Six, eight months, something like that. Yeah. Um, that was weird. How did they get, how did they, the rest of the crew find him in David Jones' locker? I forgot. They tracked down the, to the, to the area where Davy Jones like teleports from his world to the real world and all oh, that. Okay. That big green flash. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, that's right. That was kind of tight how I think the world was upside down for a little bit. Is that how they transformed? Oh, you mean when the water was in the sky and the sky Yeah, that was really weird. Yeah. It's almost like what's that cartoon? Uh, One Piece. Almost like that. Really weird pirate cartoon. Yeah. Um Let me see. It's just a crazy movie all in all. Yeah. Um next movie would be let's say Grindhouse. What were you going to say? Nothing. Liar. Uh, Grindhouse, okay. It kind of bombed in the movie theater. Grindhouse, is that one one of uh, those double features? Yeah. What was the other one? It was uh, Planet Terror oh, okay. and... Grindhouse. Uh, no, Grindhouse was the name of the whole thing. Oh, okay. Planet Terror and uh, Escape? Oh, uh, Planet Terror oh. and uh, Death Proof. I Death said Proof? Escape. I said Escape from LA. That's because what's his name? Kurt Russell's in yeah. there? Yeah. Okay. Death Proof? Okay, I have... A lot of respect for the director, but Death Proof sucked. So, like, um, Grindhouse, how long was each movie? Each movie was two hours long, so it was about a four and a half hour movie. So you stayed in there four hours? Yeah, and then I had to, it's like a racehorse. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, so what about those movies? Were they pretty good? Or, 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 you said Death Proof wasn't good, right? Death Proof, you have to watch it at least once. I mean, a lot of the parts I did like when the action actually picked up but there was so much dialogue it was too much talking it's like the Hulk the Hulk just playing out so <laughs> uh, Death Proof was the one with Kurt Russell right yes and the, and the race car yes okay so Plant Terror is the one with the woman that has the prosthetic gun leg <laughs> yeah 
it's cheesy, but Planet Terror was awesome. Okay. I mean, like, okay, normally if you see a zombie movie, whenever you kill a zombie, you know, they're, like, solid. These zombies, anytime you, like, hit them with a car or something, their whole bodies would explode into, like, a big bloody mess. There's, yeah. like, no sol- solidity. No, no, solidity. Yeah. Solidity. Yeah. <laughs> I can't say that word. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I mean, if you watch any of the interviews and all that for it, um, Robert Rodriguez is all like, yeah, I'm 13. He's not really 13. He's like in his 30s, and uh, he just thinks like a 13 year old. Right. But uh, it's pretty funny. And so Quentin Tarantino directed Death Proof, right? Yes. Uh, much respect to Quentin Tarantino, man, but oh, Death Proof was. So Kill Bill 1 and 2 was better than Death Proof, right? Hell yeah, a lot better. <laughs> The actually, here's another movie fact. The blonde girl, um, who was in the second car that cut, ru- cut <laughs> Kurt Russell tried to kill with um, Kurt Rosario Angel. Dawson and uh, the other girl. I don't remember who the other girl was, but the blonde in there, she was actually the stunt double in all the in both Kill Bill movies. Oh, okay. Okay, and uh, there you go. So, okay, next movie on the list would be Ninja Turtles. Boo! No, yeah, I haven't seen it, but I, um, I'm a big fan of the old school Ninja Turtles and the um, parts one and two of the movies back then, not part three. I like the old school cartoon and the old school movies, part one and two. I've seen one part of uh. The new Ninja Turtle cartoon, which from what I heard is actually the same Ninja Turtles from the comic books. Uh, the old school cartoons were not what they were supposed to be from the comic books, but I still like the old school ones better. I didn't care to see this movie, and I didn't care for today's cartoons. I'm the old school Ninja Turtles fan. Just uh, wanted to point that out, but let's see what Raven has to say about the new Ninja Turtles movie. Oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, the Ninja Turtles movie is actually, <laughs> you're going to think this is weird, but it actually takes place after the third movie. Right. Yeah, it takes, it takes no part from the cartoon whatsoever, hmm. which is odd, because towards the end of the movie, you actually see the A-timer laying there, Shredder's, like, Super Shredder helmet. Yeah. Um, what else? God, you see a lot of things. I mean, it does take some concept from the new cartoon with, like, the Shredder's daughter, yeah, where the hell she came from. He has a daughter? Yeah, he, I think he crapped her out or something. I know um, I know he has a mother, because uh, in one of the cartoons he made an appearance, and it's pretty funny, but uh, I didn't know about daughters. Yeah, this wasn't in the old school. She's probably freaking ugly. No. What she look? Does she wear a mask, too? Or? No, she doesn't wear uh. a mask. Um, it's worth seeing once, and only once. Yeah. Um, Casey Jones is in there with April and like they're engaged or something like that. Oh, yeah, because they had a thing for each other from part one. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, they were, they kissed in the end, so yeah. Yeah, it's funny because, um, Raphael's going like AWOL and. Again? From part one? Yeah. <laughs> he's like got anger issues and Leo took off to Africa or not Africa, Madagascar or something. He's like fighting. Monsters and crap over there. Ralph, he has like the emo of his, of Yeah, he is emo. <laughs> um, and Don is left in charge of uh, everything, but they're, it's weird because like, they're being charged bills now, so he's the only one carrying a job. Well, Michelangelo is carrying a job as a clown. How are they being... So they got to pay the utilities and the rent <laughs> for the sewer? Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. uh, yeah they have phone bills, stuff like that. So that's weird. They're, they're supposed to be... Living in the sewers to hide from the rest of society. And so now, what, is Master Splinter charging them for rent or what? <laughs> no, Splinter is like, he's like, he's dead. No. they're crazy and all that. But <laughs> it, it's pretty weird, man. Um, uh, Michelangelo's lazy self getting the job? Yeah, he's he's like a, he's not a pizza delivery. He looks like a pizza delivery clown or something. But, no, he runs like a party clown service or something like that. So the Ninja Turtles, after all these years, are still teenagers? <laughs> I don't know why they call them Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. They're not teenagers anymore. So, exactly how old were they when they first, when the cartoon or the comic first came out? 15? They were supposed to be 17. 
Okay, so and then part two came out, then part three, then part this one came yeah, out years came later out after part and, uh, So they should have been maybe at least in the twenties now, maybe. <laughs> yeah, somewhere's in that. Uh, and, and as of the new movie, they should not be teenagers. If you anymore. actually pay attention to the comics, the Ninja Turtles are actually immortal. Okay. Yeah. So they never age. So they never age. Splinter was uh, he 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 actually died of old age. He he wasn't immortal. Okay. Um. What else? Um, so they're immortal, just like Hulk Hogan. No. <laughs> Going back to the whole Casey Jones thing, yeah, Casey's like the first one to realize Raph's gone AWOL. He's like dressed up as a giant metal turtle, and it's just weird. Right. And, I don't know, they start fighting, and, you know, he's all like, Raph, what are you doing? And, yeah, and he's all like, you know it was me? Yeah, it's weird. So what's but, their plot, the storyline behind it? Oh, uh, Patrick Stewart. It's That's just it. No. <laughs> right. He's supposed to be the bad guy of the movie. He's oh. trying to, like, resurrect his partners. He's, like, some immortal godlike person. I don't know. Oh. And uh, he's trying to resurrect his troops and all that. And I don't know. You find out more of the plot as the movie goes towards the end. He's actually a good guy. He's trying to bring it back, bring back his troops so um, he can actually let them die in peace. And that way he can die in peace as well because he's just got tired of being a tyrant. And yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. The last movie on the list would be Children of Men. Children of the Corn? No. No, not quite. This movie is totally up. <laughs> um, <laughs> you can't say no. <laughs> How about uh, <laughs> or Ch so? Children of the Corn of the Cob? <laughs> uh, is this a sequel to Children of the Corn? <laughs> no, it has nothing to do with Children of the Corn. Um, Okay, Children of Men was actually starring Clive Owen. Um, man, that movie was effed up. Um, <laughs> it basically mankind has lost the ability to have kids, and I don't know. It's weird. Uh, he meets this one girl who, ha who she's pregnant, so he's trying to get her to across the sea or something to. Uh, some project or something, the human project or something like that, uh, they're going to help her, but I don't know, all sorts of people were trying to take care of, or get her and the baby that way they can control the military and all that, it's just really messed up and uh, next movie next movie is 300 Sparta! Sparta! <laughs> uh, yeah, Sparta. I was going to say Sparta. <laughs> 300. We are Spartan. 300 was an awesome movie. Um, if you haven't seen it, you better go see it right now. Go see it. <laughs> he points away that point way. way. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, lots of gore. I don't know what it quit zooming in on me. Um, yeah, for some reason they have a weird llama playing a flute or something in there. Or no, it's not playing a flute, it's playing a guitar. Right. I don't know where they got that from, but I think they were a crack. Right. Um, <laughs> I don't know. All in all, it's a good movie. Right. I never see it. <laughs> I tried to see it, but I couldn't. I have to let you borrow it. Okay. Uh, Simpsons movie. I had never saw it. I thought you did. No, I just heard it was a really long episode. It's actually okay. We talked about this in one of the old audio shows back then. Uh, but Simpsons, um, it is kind of a long episode, I guess you can say. I give it a 7 out of 10. It wasn't bad, but it, it was uh, it was the hype. <laughs> it was overhyped. Um, I guess overrated or whatever. The whole spider pig thing isn't that funny. I mean, you know, so... I don't know, everybody thought the spider pig thing was just the funniest thing in the history of the world. It wasn't that funny. But anyway, um, the movie itself, what it is, for the fact that a Simpsons movie did finally come out, it was pretty good. It is worth watching. 
Uh, I do got the DVD. So, yeah, if you're a Simpsons fan, you'll definitely love it. Probably the best thing to come out of the Simpsons movie hype was the that Simpsonizer thing from the internet. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about. Where you can go on the internet and design yourself, make yourself oh, look yeah, like, uh, yeah. you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. And, um, so that's probably... <laughs> yeah, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, I was too lazy to do it because I tried to upload a picture and said, it's not big enough. I feel like punching that Burger King... Got in the face and time you tell them your mom's not big enough. Yeah, <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> next movie, Sweeney Todd. Sweeney Todd. Tool. What the heck is that? Sweeney Todd, the Demon Baba, Fleet Street. Yes, awesome movie. Right. It's a musical. Granted, yeah, it's a Broadway play. Um, Sweeney Todd. Okay. Movie spoiler. I don't care. You. Need to go watch it anyways. Spoiler. Spoiler. That was gay. That was stupid. <laughs> spoiler. That's the universal sound for spoiler. Um, yeah, okay. The movie starts out, uh, Johnny Depp. He is a barber named Benjamin something. Who's Johnny Depp? No, I was kidding. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, Johnny Deep. Captain Jack Sparrow. Oh, yeah. yeah. Orlando Broom? No. <laughs> Broom. <laughs> um, yeah, he uh, he starts out as a barber um, who whose wife is taken by a judge and he's wrongly accused of a crime he didn't do. He's been in prison for like 20 years. When he finally gets out, uh, he comes back. He's changed his name to Sweeney Todd. And he wants to get revenge by killing the judge and those who work under him. And he invites people off the street to come into his barber shop. And he pr he pretty much just kills them. He slices their throat. He gets them ready like he's gonna give them a nice shave and all. Just slices their throats. And, yeah. First he doesn't know what to do with the bodies, but um, the lady that runs the meat shop downstairs, she's even more messed up than he is. She has the idea to serve uh, the people as food right. to get rid of the bodies. Right. Sounds like an episode from The Simpsons, a Halloween special. That's pretty much where they got the idea. From. <laughs> yeah. Um, it was Sweeney Todd, um, and it's just weird because at the end of the movie you find out like, well during the movie they make it seem like the wife who the judge stole was killed, and what was it, um, they said she poisoned herself, and the daughter stayed with the judge, the guy who sent Johnny Depp to prison. And it's weird because the guy, uh, the judge is all like, "Yes, I'm gonna marry my ward, my stepdaughter, or blah." Or, or yeah, it's weird. Um, so this movie's not a comedy. No, it sounds like it's Sweeney Todd. No, not at all. <laughs> um, not at all. Not at all. No. <laughs> um, yeah, I highly recommend seeing it at least once. Yeah. Okay, uh, right. that had nothing to do with anything. Uh, Aliens vs. Predator, go ahead and talk about that. Aliens vs. Predator, I did not see that. I want to see it because I want to see the Pretalian. It's a mixture of an alien and a predator together. Um, what do you call Aliens vs. Predator? Requiem? Is that Requiem, because the last one sucked. <laughs> um... In order to pretty much get the the gist of what happened in this one, to see why it was caused. I mean, gist. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, what the heck? Talking? I think he's going to go get his love Hulk Hogan doll. No. Um, <laughs> you have to see that one to see what what leads up. There he goes. <laughs> That's his lover. Um, Your lover. <laughs> 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 yeah. Um, it leads up to the events, like, it leads, <laughs> happens right after the events of the first movie. Um, the, the predator who survived from the last movie, he gets an alien put in him and it, it adapts and gets the mandibles. And, yeah, it just goes off tearing ass and, yeah. <laughs> Right. And like the predator in this movie, he's like supposed to be like super badass and killed like hundreds and thousands of aliens and all that, all sorts of things. And he he doesn't take sides. The last movie, you know, the 
the predator took a human on as an apprentice. Now this one, he doesn't take sides. He kills everybody. Kill them all. So, yeah. <laughs> yes, kill them all. <laughs> uh, yeah, word. All right. Um, right. And uh, last movie we talk about that I've seen recently that came out 2007, The Condemned. Starting Stone Cold Steve Austin for you wrestling fans out there. Um, the movie is okay. It's not. I don't think it's worth buying a DVD. It's okay for what it is. Uh, <laughs> it's better than the Marine, in my opinion. The Marine. What the hell is that? John Cena. Oh, that kind of. The end is okay. That's all I can say about it. Uh, I get a probably a, a five point five six out of ten. It's not bad, but uh, it's not the worst movie either. It's just you know. It's more like made for TV movie than a, than it. Uh, so was the Marine a one point one? Marine was five point zero, I think. Uh. It was okay too, but <laughs> the Marine tried to. Uh, Marine came out of six, but we're going to talk about that real quick. The Marine was something uh, that should have never been made. Yeah, it tried to be funny. John Cena is a good actor, but the movie it tried to be. This part where it tried to be funny and it wasn't. And um, the the coolest part was where. Uh, one guy goes, and who's this guy, the Terminator? And that guy that played his evil T-1000 looks to the rearview mirror looks back at him. So, you know, kind because of, that guy played as evil T-1000 in Terminator. Yeah. So, kind of like that, a joke or inside, not inside joke, but, you know, everybody's seen Terminator. It's a movie joke. If you don't get it, you need to get, uh, get your head out of your, uh, your body. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, uh, Condemned is just okay. So, I don't recommend, recommend right, man. Yeah, I recommend you buy it on uh, DVD. It's okay. It's I. All right. Uh, now we can move on to video games of 2007. I haven't hardly played any new video games of 2007. Raven has, however. I'm going to talk to you about that. Yeah. Um, the only game I played was this past year that came out was uh, for the DS. <coughs> it, well, what's DS stand for anyway? Dual Shock, I guess. Dual System. Okay, Dual Shock. I remember the <laughs> PlayStation Dual Shock. Yeah, the Phantom Hourglass. Yes, the Phantom Hourglass. It's actually pretty fun. I mean, you get well. It kind of carries off the whole uh, thing of where you have a fairy following you, like uh, from Ocarina of Time. Oh, um, but you get three different ones, and they're basically the. You know, the courage, wisdom, and power. Yeah. You know, the three Triforce powers. Wind, water, heart. No, we're, no, not, talk, we're not talking about Captain Planet. Oh, okay. Um, Captain Bullet. <laughs> yeah. Um, gonna take... Oh, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know, it's pretty cool, because you get to build up their power, not just yours. Um... What are you reaching for now? Nothing. Go ahead. <laughs> Give me that. Uh, <laughs> our video game review for this week. Check it out. What the hell is that? Asteroids. Uh, Dang it. <laughs> Mir backwards mirror webcam. <laughs> uh, Phantom Hourglass. Yeah, it, it's a, it's pretty fun. I, I recommend playing it. Anything else? No. What about Phantom of the Opera? Okay. Um, next is music. And Raven will talk to you all about that because I don't know anything about music. Music. Uh, yeah, just a real quick joke. I work with this dude that he reminds me of Ned Flanders because whenever <laughs> Ronnie was talking about Simpsons, yeah, if you heard this dude laugh, you would really think he was Ned Flanders. Just the way he talks. He, uh, how, how do you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, anyways, music. Okay, first off, I'm going to talk about Calibris again. <laughs> Most awesome horror rock band in the world. Not horror rock. Horror, horror rock. <laughs> Old school horror flicks, baby. Uh, for any of you who will be um, around San Antonio on the 1st of February... Don't. No. I'm going to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> Go check them out. They'll be in San Antonio. Just ask around at um, one of the restaurants and all that. Ask about uh, clubs in San Antonio, they'll tell you. And on the second, they will be in Dallas. Those of you in Dallas need to go. If not, you suck. Um, Don't go. <laughs> um, 
Hit me for real, watch out. <laughs> yes! Uh, I was wondering what that little pillow bill was. <laughs> Pansy. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, really awesome band. I've known them, actually, the second will be a, officially a year that I first met them. And Ron Moore's pulling out some other crappy thing that he has in his collection. Um, second would be Blunt. No, no band better than Calibri's. Uh, uh, the heck was that? Stained. Okay. Uh-uh. Uh, go ahead, sorry. <laughs> Blitz Kid. Yes. Blitz Creek? No. no. <laughs> Blitz Kid. No. Um, awesome horror rock band also. Same genre as Calibri's. Um, they have a good, bunch of good songs about werewolves, vampires, all that stuff. Zombies. Oh, man. So they're in competition with Calibri's? No, actually, no. So they were out before Calibri's, but... Oh, okay. Yeah. They're, they have a They like their fans. Both of these bands love their fans. So, yeah, if you ever get a chance, definitely check them Both out. Both the bands love the fans. Right. That rhymes. Ah! Yeah. I know of a band real quick. They're on my space. They're called Stage 3-1. They're a video game music band. MySpace.com is on the screen right there. MySpace.com slash stage31. It's really stage 3 1, like you know, the Mario stage where they make re uh, video game remixes of some of the cool video game music back then, like Zelda, Mega Man, and all that stuff. They're pretty cool. Check them out. That was weak. <laughs> Anyways, uh, that, that's a good promotional, <laughs> promotional thing. Sure. No. It's called selfless promotion. <laughs> Um, yeah, and, uh, and on that subject, go check out 74 Promotions. <laughs> and uh, if you're trying to get your band or a band you know to play in Waco, or anywhere else, Dallas, San Antonio, Austin, go check them out. You already talked about that in the old I know, I do it did. more than once. It's no, called Selfless Promotion. <laughs> 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 okay, um, any other bands? Huh. Okay, she had other bands. Uh, let me see. That would be... Metallica. Blaster, the Rocket Man. Right. They're no longer together. Grand, yeah, they're an awesome band. Um, they're a Christian... Uh, actually, they're a Christian punk band. But ha! No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, wait, I'm Christian. I forgot. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> <And I'm kidding. laughs> Yeah, um, they check them them out. Um, let me see. Uh, Phenomenons. They're not, they're not a... Astronauts? They're not like a heavy band, but I don't know, a lot of their stuff kind of has a country influence. I hate country, but... They're not heavy. It's awesome. You mean they're all skinny, or...? Right. (laughs) Um... Uh, this is heavy. Uh, What's the heavy word? No. <laughs> Back to the future joke. <laughs> uh, What's up with this heavy? Is something wrong with the Earth's gravitational pull in the future? Alright, <laughs> <laughs> uh, go ahead. Um, Speaking of bands, talk about Mario McFly's band from Back to the Future. <laughs> I don't remember the name of that band. What about your band? Did you have a band? Yeah, I've actually got another one coming together right Which now. Which is called Hip Hop We Hip-hop have no name right now. Yeah, Hip Hop Kings. Once we get some more information together, I'll let you know. Did you hear me? What? Hip Hop Kings. That's your. Hip Hop sucks. <laughs> Just uh, like rap. Rap. And country. You should have joined Kurt Henning and the West Texas Rednecks back then. But they play country, they suck. Oh, yeah. But you hate, they hate rap. Yeah. What do you like better? <laughs> Neither. <laughs> Alright. Is that Bands. it? Bands. <laughs> uh, what, what band came out with cool albums last year? Any real famous ones? Like Stain? Not uh. Uh, last year? Actually, um, the singer from Mudvayne actually came out with another band, well, another side project. It was called Hell Yeah. Ron Miller actually has that. Oh yeah, yeah, hell yeah, or not? <laughs> <laughs> um, 
awesome stuff, man. It's all pretty much about drinking. Uh, <laughs> uh, he's an alcoholic. He and his grandpa are best friends, and they get drunk together. Right. <laughs> but, um, check him out. Good, heavy stuff. Heavy, I think. What's his heavy work? Is it fat? No. Okay. Alright, uh, is that it? Yes, it is. Alright, uh, all right, that is it for the XC2K Year Review 2000 show. Uh, we're not the best reviewers, but we don't care. Um, and I know we only reviewed one video game in 2007. Well, me and Raven, I guess we don't play that much video games hardly anymore. But, um, so there you go. I mean, we just do this for fun. It's not the most professional show ever. But uh, I want to end on a note. Um, Raven's already gone. So this is uh, recorded at a later time. Um... I think well, probably my favorite SC2K show, speaking of 2007 year review, probably my favorite show was uh, where uh, it was the show where Jody faced, Swindoll faced Young B in Street Fighter. Oh, my ear. <laughs> He's hurt me, Doc. Yeah, it's Mike Tyson, you idiot. <laughs> hey, is this a kid a joke? What is the real challenger? Uh oh. Who's that? Doctor Wally. That's the same ship he's been riding, a busted ass vehicle. <laughs> Man, we got rims on it. <laughs> <laughs> it's gold, gold rims. Here we go, skull caps, Dayton's. We got a grill. Ex Gemini did not name himself after no. Gemini Man. No, they named uh, they named Gemini Man after Ex Gemini. S two K shows me in my personal opinion. Um, I think they're okay. I think they could be funnier or, or better, but I have to work with Windows Movie Maker people. So the editing process, the editing work is not the best in the world. So uh, Windows Movie Maker is all I have to work with. And uh, this webcam, $80 webcam is a uh, software that I have to record everything with. And I use Cam Studio to record uh, video game uh, reviews. Uh, I don't have a video capture card, so I can't record straight from my TV. Not, I don't have that capture card yet. Hopefully, I'll get that. And I can start reviewing other games, other than NES games, which is fun and I don't mind. But um, my computer does not have; it's not upgraded enough to review uh, SNES games or more advanced game systems because the video would skip and the music would skip real bad. And you can tell by my the Nintendo reviews that we've done on the on YouTube. It kind of lags, so I could barely do 8-bit reviews on my computer. But um, I like for you guys who have been watching the SC2K shows uh, all of last year when it first started around September. Um, you know, go ahead and uh, post a comment under this video and let me know what was your favorite and why. Um, I already, already said my favorite, uh, so there you go. Uh, that's it, and for the next show, which will be up whenever. Uh, we'll get started on the on the on regular business, which is uh, we talk about different stuff and then do a video game review. We still haven't done Mega Man 6 yet, so that will be the conclusion of the Mega Man trilogy. Um, so that's it for Raven, who's already gone. I'm Ron Moore saying thank you for watching the SC2K show all of last year, and hopefully 2008 we'll have uh, more better shows. All right, take care.